Greetings and salutations, GI Nerd. This week, we're going to have a look at Cloudland and Montpellier Hill and that bumping great big lump of rock behind Bowen Hill Station there. Uh, you can see it from all over Brisbane, and uh, it uh, used to have a lovely ballroom on it, which uh, we'll look at that. And uh, it was used by uh, uh, Tom Petrie, and, um, and uh, there's some interesting geology up there as well. So, uh, yeah, I've really uh, had a ball doing this one, climbing all over the hill, and out in the wind. It was a beautiful day. Lovely, you'll see that on the walkabout. Uh, we've got some interesting stuff and some weird six degrees of separation stuff going on here. So, anyway, uh, let's get into it. And you know what I'm gonna say? Let's, let's rock. rock. Hey, Geo Nerds. Just firstly, I'd like to thank all the new subscribers to the channel. Subscribing really helps in the wild and weird world of YouTube. And if you want to get a ding every time I push out a new video, and I do quite a few of them, smash that little bell. So let's get on with the video. Also, as I learn more about the colonial history of Brisbane, I feel I really need to say this. I begin today by acknowledging the terrible people traditional custodians of the land in which we live today, and I pay my respects to their elders, past and present, and acknowledge that they got royally dicked by my ancestors. I take no pride in the knowledge of what was done to these people and recognise their pain. My ancestors came from Northern Ireland, a land not too unfamiliar with land theft, murder and genocide. It just seems a shame we seem to want to do it all again here. In the recollections of Tom Petrie, a uh, document I strongly recommend everyone reads, he recalls he often went hunting and collecting honey with the Aborigines along Bowen Terrace, through Tenerife and Bowen Hills, Spring Hill and Red Hill. And once, he even lived with the Aborigines in Bowen Hills for several days after his parents caught him smoking. So, this area was important to Aboriginal people and you can bet the top of that hill was extremely important. Uh, the area had a name, but I'm not aware of the name for the actual hill. So when we come forward a bit, the area was first known as O'Connell Town. Uh, but it was later renamed to Bowen Hills in 1862 to honour our first governor, Sir George Bowen. We've talked about this guy before. Pretty interesting character. Uh, I don't really do people, but he's an interesting guy. And what was to become known as Montpellier Hill, uh, Centra Hill at times, uh, at, but the name Montpellier Hill was to stick. Uh, even though Montpellier House is long gone and Centra is still there. There were three residents of Remark on this hill. There were other nice houses there and they're still there, but the ones of Remark on the top of the hill were Montpellier House, Sintra, and Folkestone. Now Folkestone, the property originally belongs to George Gibbon, who acquired a deed of grant from the New South Wales government in 1887. Remember, there was no Queensland then. After acquisition later on by the Perry family, you know, William Perry, Perry House in town there, etc. a big name. Numerous changes were made to the bungalow and it was given the name Folkestone. Uh, but in about 1912, the bungalow was destroyed by fire and subsequently the block was subdivided. Uh, in November 1917, our old mate James Doohig, KCMG, you know, kindly call me God, uh, the uh, Archbishop of the Brisbane Diocese purchased uh, part of the estate um, and he built the uh, Our Lady of Victories Church there. And I'll put a picture of that up. It's a hideous looking thing, but I suppose if you like that sort of stuff. But it took them from 1919 to 1962 to build it. So, you know, that concrete had to let dry for a while, I think. The next house was Sintra. And if you get a chance to go up this hill and drive around, Sintra is one of the most beautiful properties in Brisbane. This was built from 1863 to the 1890s. But a lot of these houses, they're being built forever. Um, and... Uh, 
It was a two-storey Georgian-influenced stone house and it was built for George Dudley. In 1877, the property was bought by Boyd Dunlop Moorhead. That's a name you may remember because uh, he was the first Premier of Queensland. But more importantly to me, he was the uncle of P. L. Travis, best known as the author of Mary Poppins. You know, it all comes back. Julie Andrews, Mary Poppins, I don't know. It's a strange world. But anyway, um, yeah, Sintra's a beautiful place. It's up there. It's still there today. It changed hands in 2020 for seven and a half million. It sounds like a pretty good deal to me. I think if you did it today, there'd be a one in front of that. But T-Rox does not like the price of real estate anywhere. It's dumb. And the last house up there, the one we'll talk about, because frankly, that's the one that uh, Cloudland was built on, was Montpellier House. Now the guy, uh, James Collinshaw, was born in Sydney, was educated down there at the grammar school, came to Queensland in 1861 to practice as an architect. So uh, in 1878, he was appointed to a seat in the Queensland Legislative Council. Now, the Queensland Legislative Council is our version of a Senate, and it doesn't exist, it abolished itself in 1922. So as much as uh, uh, I don't really like those uh, right-wing dudes, in the end, um, if it halves the number of politicians in your state, it can't be a bad thing. And it's still gone. The house is sitting near the tour of parliament house, an empty house, been there empty since 1922. Um, he lived there, he built that as Montpellier as a family home. He lived there at Bowen Hills. Um, it was built in the 1960s, but those things take a while to build. Um, he lived there uh, and he died in 1929 of heart failure in the house as an old man, obviously. Uh, took about 10 years and uh, the kids got rid of it and it was demolished in 1939 to make way for Luna Park, you guessed it. Uh, and we'll get to that in a second. Well, that starts us with this guy. His name was T.S. Eslick, a twice bankrupt showman, prone to exaggeration, but he had got some uh, score on the board. He uh, built quite a few amusement parks around the world, including Luna Park in Melbourne in 1912. And he'd done a lot of other stuff. He really had. Um, this guy could have his own video. His life story is a, is a book. And I don't really do people. So uh, let's say uh, he was a colourful character. What we knew and grew up with as, as Cloudland was actually the Luna Park ballroom. So the Luna Park dance hall. Uh, it was up on the hill there in Brisbane. Uh, you'll see it in a sec. We've got some photos of it up there now. Uh, and there was a funicular railway, which we'll talk more about in a separate section of this video. And um, it was built, um, we're gonna summarize this really quickly. It was built, the um, uh, fun park never opened. World War II came along, um, it was demolished. After World War II, Cloudland became a thing. It was fantastic. Uh, 1960s, Buddy Holly was there in 1958, his only Brisbane uh, appearance, and many, many others. And in the 1970s, every band in Australia, every band in Australia played there. And uh, the um, Midnight Oil immortalised it in their song Dream World. The lyric says, Cloudland into Dreamland turns. And you'll see why. Uh, because in 1982, at four o'clock in the morning on the 7th of November, our own Dean Brothers knocked the thing down, destroyed it, even though it was heritage listed and there was no uh, demolition permit issued. Uh, never stopped the Dean Brothers. Uh, their slogan was, all we leave is memories. And yeah, that's what they did. No question of that. No charges were laid, no problem, all gone. So uh, Brisbane was shocked when it woke up to see it gone, uh, to put up some fairly mediocre apartments really. Anyway, uh, let's go on and have a bit of a look at that funicular railway. Well, folks, this is the funicular railway. People could uh, get a tram, and I'll show you a tram back in, a map in a minute. Uh, get off the tram, walk across the road, hop on the funicular railway, and it would take them up to the top of the hill. And here it is looking back down along Breakfast Creek Road, and uh, not a particularly nice day, actually. But uh, it ran from 1949 to 1967. They pulled it down in 67. I was in Brisbane in 67, but I don't remember this. 
Uh, there it is there, and uh, unusual, the only one of its kind in Queensland that I'm aware of, but anyway, oh, there might be another one, there might be one in New South Wales. Um, this is the tram map, and I'll uh, zoom in in a minute and show you where the stop was that you would get off at if you took the tram from anywhere and you wanted to go to the Cloudland Roar and have a nice night out or a nice Sunday afternoon dancing. Anyway, um, onwards, let's have a look at the geology and the geography of this area with some maps. I think that's uh, a bit more tea rocky. Hey, Geo Nodes, back on the maps where we love it. This is a map from 1865. We're zooming across the valley here, and here are our two blocks right here, 144 and 145, on top of Montpellier Hill. We move along now to a map from 1865, the old uh, Six Chainer. There they are, their names, Sintra and Montpellier, and you can see the hill there. Here's an eight chain map. This is a beautiful map, these eight chainers. These are somewhat later. This one's 1917. You can see that contour of the hill so you can see what's going on, as you do. And uh, that's what we wanted to do there. And uh, this one's from 1914, but it's just a different map and it's still pretty interesting. There's the hill, the contours are there and the blocks are there. Uh, we'll move along now to a Brisbane map of 1920. And uh, the reason I say to choose this is it's actually got Luna Park marked on it um, somehow. And you can see the area there, um, just down from Perry Park. Geology here, our old favourites, Brisbane Tuff, Shale. Let me tell you, this map's wrong. I'll show you later in the uh, walkabout that I found Brisbane Tuff sitting right in the middle of that shale. So where it says the Tuff boundary there is, is not accurate. A lot of gravel down there, low down. Well, let's have a look at the LiDAR. <laughs> Pretty obvious, it's a hill. Uh, that's what it is, uh, and it certainly stands out like one, as you would imagine it would. Um, interesting to see the creeks around that. Uh, we're just gonna have a look now at uh, 1936. And as you can see, uh, Cloudland's built, because it is 1936, and this one's 1949. And it's definitely built here because obviously we knew it was there then. You can see the roof shining there. There is old Cloudland. So there are the maps. There's everything else. I think what we'll do is now we'll have a bit of a flyby in and uh, then we'll do some walkabout. Here we are just coming into the city. We're going to have a little dive down over the uh, high, down through the city past the Commonwealth Bank building and over towards Spring Hill. We're gonna hook around now and go straight here because it's not far away. Here it is, this is the uh, Cloudland Apartments there on this hill, as you can see. As we go around, where that stand of Jack Aranda's is, that's where the Luna Park uh, Amusement Park was. And you can still see Sintra there. It's a beautiful place. Um, and the church there, which is, uh, uh, where the other old house was up there. and This is a fairly big hill. This is a geological anticline that's been um, just weathered. All these northern hills seem to be this way. But as you can see, bunch of apartments, Gladland, yeah, I don't know, I like Gladland. I thought it was nice. Anyway, uh, I went for a bit of a walk around here. There's some interesting stuff to see. So uh, uh, let's get into that. Let's go walk about. Well, here we find ourselves down on what is Breakfast Creek Road, just passing the Bowls Club here. And we're heading up towards that hill in front of us, which is Montpellier Hill. And those units you can see up there are the Cloudland units. And we're just gonna go over and have a look at the service station here. Now this is the old car park for Cloudland. Um, and this is what happens when you plant fig trees on top of uh, shale. Uh, step on a crack, break your mother's back, be careful what you walk on. And uh, these are just amazing plants. Uh, we're just going to walk up. This is Dunlop Street. This is a, it's not that old a street. In, bit, in places it is, in places it isn't. As you can see, it's been well and truly gentrified, all these multi bazillion dollar uh, units here. And we're walking up here because uh, this is taking us towards where the old funicular railway was. And I don't think many people know there was a funicular railway in Brisbane. But apart from being a beautiful part of Brisbane, there's no question of that. 
It's also very old, but these gutters are made out of cement. It tells you something, they're not that old. Um, if we just look here through the fence, take a little sneaky picky, we're looking down on top of the roof of the service station there and the car park of the service station. Uh, that was the car park for Cloudland and just in front of the service station on the road was where the tram stop was. So you'd get off the tram, you'd walk across that and uh, the funicular would pick you up from down there and it ran through here and we're just going to spin around and what is now Dunlop Street, which is just to our left here, uh, is the bed of the old funicular railway and when you see it, it is obvious, absolutely obvious that was a funicular railway. Uh, we'll walk up to the top of this street, sorry about the uh, telegraph pole in the photo there, I wasn't really paying attention, but anyway, um, we'll walk up to the top of this in a minute, we'll have a look back down it, believe me, this is a steep street, but uh, yeah, worth doing. Uh, part of Brisbane's history. I really love these houses around here are fantastic. They really are. So here we are. He's one of our uh, magpie friends begging food off me. And if I forgot my magpie. I always carry magpie food, but I forgot today. Sorry. Anyway, looking back down Dunlop Street here, the funicular. This is an 03 road, but you can walk it. Obviously, you drive up if you want. You just got to drive back down it. These are gorgeous houses up here. They always were. This is Sintra. Very quickly becoming my favourite house in Brisbane. Uh, up on top of what, Pallier Hill. One of the, uh, well, the only, uh, one of the big houses remaining. Uh, and that was the driveway for Montpellier House, straight ahead, where that black vehicle is there. You just went straight through there and you're in Montpellier House. Not anymore, that's the gated Cloudland Apartments, you know, you can't go in. This is the uh, one of the gates for Centra. Uh, and there it is, it's, uh, that bit's pink. Yeah, the whole lot was pink at one stage, as you probably saw back in the photos can't say I really enjoyed that. That's it there, just sneaking through the fence. It's just a beautiful house, it really is. Obviously they uh, need to find the petrol for their lawnmower, but anyway, I don't judge. Uh, it's just a beautiful place, it really is. It's Queensland in a can. Around the other side, I'm walking down Collinshaw Street and uh, a bit of construction going on here. What do we got here? This is not shale, this is tough. This is hundreds of metres from where the tuff should finish. And even though this isn't in situ, it's here. They didn't drag this from the other side of the hill. There's shale on this hill, and there, oh, sorry, there's tuff on this hill, and there's not supposed to be. And there's a lot of it there if you look back through that rock pile. Uh, so we'll go along through this cutting. I came here specifically to look at this cutting. Uh, and uh, here's other bits of the cutting, and there's little veins and it's a straight, it does not look like shale. This looks like the Aspley formation. It looks like bits of, there's bits of, if you look carefully in there, there's rounded bits of quartz, there's all sorts of braccia, uh, and there's bits of tuff in there, there's little veins of tuff. This is a very confused landscape. Uh, and it is not the Narran Lee Fernvale shale that we've all seen hundreds of times now in my video, all around Brisbane. This is supposed to be Narran Lee Fernvale shale. It is not. It is not at the top that you can understand. That's probably construction debris from the uh, from the fill or something. But it was pretty windy this day. The old grass wouldn't cooperate. But uh, we'll have a look at another piece now, just down the same street, uh, Collinshaw Street. I'd, you walk down it. It's not the only we got right over once because I wasn't paying attention. Now that looks like shale. It's about 20 metres away. That looks like the good old Naren Lee Fernvale shale, except when you look up the top, that looks like either argillite or maybe a very light tuff. I couldn't get up there to see. The stuff up in the top corner there is concrete. Good old anthropocyte. It's been textured and coloured to the uh, blue bloods who live up here don't have to have rocks falling on their houses. But we all know it's going to happen. It's just a matter of when. This shit's all coming down as they say. As Mike Hobbs would say, it's all coming down. Gravity will always win. A little bit more here. Now this is uh, this looks like argillite to me. That really fine siltstone that we get in the uh, in the, the city. When you're walking through those cuttings there, you'll see them. Um, there's a bit of concrete in there where they've uh, done a bit of uh, plastering and mascaring to uh, cover up the the. Uh, this argillite gets wet; it just dissolves. It really does. And this is at the end of that cutting. But this stuff up the top here, that's tough. And that's in situ, and it's sitting on top of, and where you expect it to be, on top of the shale. And this piece in front of us here is tough as well, and that's in situ, that hasn't moved. And this is on the eastern side of this hill. There is not supposed to be any tuff here, according to the ge geological maps. 
that we now know something they don't. There is, and lots of it. Uh, and I'm sure the early people knew this, by the way. It's just probably, a map. I'm not sure the resolution of those maps, whether they can find a, a vein of stuff that's only a metre or so thick, but there's quite a bit of this here. And I'll tell you what, if these guys ever had to dig this for the, for the uh, uh, footings for those units, they'd know it was here. I'll tell you, that's all concrete there. It's what happens when they try and make it look like rock, when it isn't. Stop it falling into the street. This is just looking down Colin Shore Street, and it's a beautiful little street, it really is. Very windy day here. This is uh, a voiceover. I, unfortunately, the audio was just useless for that day. Um, and the reason I'm showing you this is the pit we're looking at now was Luna Park. This is where the amusement rides were set into the hill, the Big Dipper was, and all those other things that never got used. Uh, Luna Park, yeah, never happened. Looking over towards the uh, Gasworks precinct down there now. Beautiful piece of Brisbane, it really is. And uh, down the road here a bit, just sitting up atop Breakfast Creek, uh, we're just looking out over uh, Breakfast Creek Road. That white building there is a funeral home, you know, where all the dead people live. And we're spinning around, this is a little park, almost impossible to get to, but it's here. And here we have the Cloudland Memorial. And it's a steel arch. It's really nice, actually. It's worth looking at. All that green, by the way, is uh, is uh, Cobbler's Peak. So well, you want to come pretty soon before they get mature. A lovely piece of uh, aluminium picnic table and a free barbie. And you can look out over the uh, funeral home and think about Cloudlands. You've had your lot again for the week. Uh, I love this one. It's great fun. The research, the Mary Poffins reference, uh, you know, all the stuff. There was a lot more, a lot more I could have put in this, but it was getting too long. And you know what it's like. It just goes on. History is a rabbit hole. You go down it, temporal dilation occurs, and you wake up a week later. Anyway, not to worry. Great, good walk, very steep hill, worth doing. If you want to walk those things, what I did today, go and have a look around, jump off Bowen Hill Station, all the buses through the valley, will drop you down the front. Uh, all the trains are at Bowen Hills, it's just around the back, it's a lovely place. Got an awesome Bunnings down there too. Great Bunnings, and a bunch of uh, uh, Perry Parks, really cool. Uh, there's just so much history down there, I couldn't do it all. Um, not really too big into history, but as you can see, it gets that way. Anyway, we've got Tuong Creek coming up, I promise. I'm working through that. I've changed my mind on some of that. I've discovered some of the uh, uh, environmental shit mannequins the uh, state government carried on with up there, and I'm changing my whole attitude. I still love the creek, all the footage, but we're going to give a couple of... Uh, uh, we're going to give both barrels to the uh, minister who was involved, and I've been a little while getting it going. So anyway, we'll get there. Anyway... Uh, thanks to all the new subscribers, I really appreciate you, you make this channel worth doing. And you know, while I was up there, while I was up there, there was an old fella came out, because I'm sitting there with a camera and a stupid hat on, he says, what are you doing mate? I said, oh, I was shooting a few history videos uh, of Cloudland. He said, oh mate, I remember when Cloudland had a special day on there where they got um, uh, all these pigs in and they taught them how to do a ballet. Apparently it was called Swine Lake. and smash that like button like it's Space 1999. And if you want to see more, subscribe and share this with, say, a thousand of your closest friends. And let's see just how far that little algorithm can go before its CPU explodes. Copulator. you later.